and Touchdown announced the sports announcer via the television that hung above the various bottles of happiness at Tucker's Irish pub. What was meant to cause excitement meant nothing to Scott who was sitting on a lonely bar stool, his attention drawn between the football game, his cell phone, and the various patrons who were in the bar. Yes, screamed the young male bartender who gave one clap displaying his enthusiasm. Scott wished he could be happier, but that was not the case. Here he was single not making any matches on Minder and burnt out after a long day at the office. His mid-level financial job seemed more glamorous out of college than it did nowadays. It had only been about five years since graduation but felt like so long ago. It was a mixed crowd at Tucker's tonight with two men in their forties or fifties sitting nearby. A four-top eating wings and drinking draft beer about ten feet behind him, three middle-aged women who apparently needed a girl's night out, a few random loner guys like him scattered throughout the bar, a young couple on what may have been a date, and then four college-age girls who were easily the most attractive people in the bar. All of them were somewhat misplaced for being at an Irish bar on a Sunday night hence the short black dress the redhead girl was wearing, the tight tops showing cleavage the two brunettes had on, and the blonde with the stripped skirt and pink top who was begging for attention. He noticed how they approached getting service from the mixed-race bartender on duty, often leaning over the bar to show give him a better view of their breasts and high-living him occasionally. Scott assumed he knew them in some fashion. Perhaps a guy one of their boyfriends knew, one they may have dated, or just an interest from the local state university based on their close age. Five years ago and he would been all over them with his friends trying to take one home but that was a thing of the past. His friends didn't want to go out as often anymore and usually it was just for happy hour with the very rare weekend visit thanks to their increased life commitments such as work and wives. The two dreaded W.S. in his life. What he would do to be able to be younger, even by a few years, to be around girls like that again, even for just a one-time thing. There was no need to be stupid. He knew approaching all of them at once would end in humiliation, maybe even causing his penis to shrivel a bit. There was no common connection, it wasn't like he could mention knowing one of them or their friends. Then again, if he did go up to them for even the slightest bit of company or entertainment, it wouldn't be as creepy as if one of the two older guys next to him did the same action. Instead, he smiled as the bartender came towards him. How's it going down here? Scott replied while looking at the group of young college girls. I'll take another Jack and Coke and please send a round of whatever those girls are drinking down there. The bartender did a second take between Scott and the girls. Are you sure about that? The bartender had seen this type of thing before and gave a slight laugh. This was a little confusing to Scott, but he responded. Yeah. He was a little nervous while he saw the bartender get a collection of Malibu and other flavored vodka, a collection of juices, and whipped cream. Maybe sugar-infused alcohol wasn't always the best conversation starter, but there was only one way to find out. He had used this classic pickup technique a few times in the past to various degrees of success. What was the worst that could happen? Just he is out $25 and they ignore him? The group of girls smiled, but looked slightly confused as the bartender approached them with their drinks. Scott couldn't make out the entire conversation, but he saw the bartender mention something to them and the entire group including him looked at Scott. It was a death stare. Some of the girls looked angry while the others gave him a WTF look. Failure. Scott's heart slightly sank as the bartender came over with his drink. They said thank you. Sure. Scott muttered to himself before bringing the glass to his face and taking a swig of heartbreak mixed with a pick-me-up. He turned his attention back to the boring football game trying to use it as a distraction to avoid further humiliation. Several minutes later, a surprise came about. Your turn. This is from the girls. What? Scott said surprised, being interrupted from checking his cell phone. His attention was drawn between the amber-colored drink with no ice in a rocks glass and the group of attractive college girls who were now waving and smiling at him. What is it? he asked. It's some drink they invented on the spot. 
Hmm, little odd that they just didn't get him a Jack and Coke. He debated walking over to them and thanking them for the drink to get conversation started, but instead took the easy way out and raised his glass for some form of cheers. They mirrored his behavior and continued giggling in their girlish ways. Scott, already a little buzzed, placed the glass to his lips and drank all three ounces of the drink at once. There was a taste of lemon with what seemed like a vanilla liquor mixed with something fruity with no burn. Nice and smooth. Since the bar was still not very busy, he got off his stool and tried to say thank you ladies, but nothing came out. Instead, he felt extremely dizzy all of a sudden. His stomach started to go in circles and he experienced slight heartburn. The girls continued to smile even though Scott's face was turning white. All of them had their fair share of drunk moments, but this was nothing like what Scott was now experienced. He thought he had done every nasty shot in college, but this felt like nothing he had done before. Once his face started to feel numb, he ran to where the bathrooms were located. A small corner way with two unisex bathrooms. To his fortune, the first one was unused and unlocked. He immediately slammed the door behind him without locking it with his impaired vision and bent down on his knees to the toilet bowl. Some of what he drank earlier and his dinner soon came out of his body, but that had little effect on the sensations happening around his body. His legs felt numb and started to become smaller both in height and mass. Leg hair was disappearing and his jeans started to roll up. His arms followed suit and became daintier with less hair on them as his black long sleeve shirt started to roll up and became a black blouse. He felt much pain on his chest as two C-cup breasts started to form. The entire numbness on his body made it so he could not feel the type of development happening. As his torso redid its shape, a black demi-cup bra formed showing ample cleavage from the top of his blouse. Numbness on his face started to wear off as his facial structure transformed itself to show fuller lips and very high cheekbones. Makeup started to appear on his face in the form of heavy foundation, plenty of eyeshadow, lip plumper, and long mascara-infused eyelashes. Downstairs, Scott's testicles were becoming smaller and contracting inside of his body towards the new uterus that was developing thanks to the special rum in the shot. His penis followed the pattern by forming his new vagina lips and clit as his boxers became a black thawing under his Aztec pattern skirt. A few bracelets appeared on his wrists next to a small watch as his ears pierced themselves with two large hoop earrings coming from them while his hair became slightly darker and came down his back. Once the sex change was complete, the headache started going away along with the pain all around his body. Though he was still a little out of it to realize his small feet now had heels on them. Suddenly, the door slammed open and all four girls came rushing in. Oh my god, Stephanie, are you okay? said the blonde girl. One of the brunettes came closer to her and put her hand on Stephanie's shoulder. Gosh, girl. I didn't think you were going to go that hard tonight. Stephanie regained some consciousness and felt that her body was different. She looked down to see her breasts and that what she was wearing. What the fuck just happened? She asked in her new soprano voice. The girls continued to play their game even though they knew exactly what had just happened. Come on, let's get you some water, one of them said. All of the girls picked Stephanie up from leaning down and carried her towards the door. By the bathroom mirror, Stephanie got a good look at what she looked like. She was now a very attractive girl just like them. Long dark hair, full body figure, large breasts. All memories of being a male were still there and she didn't know what to do. There was no chance to speak up and protest. The girls were now in control of her taking her back to the bar. How could she explain this? What questions would she ask? Too many emotions hit here at once, although at the end of the day, she got what she wanted. A chance to be with those type of girls.